Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what influences desire. We'll talk a little bit about hormones and cyclical changes and how our physical body affects our sexual desire. Um, but when I'm talking about the doctor in the bed, I'm referring to how is our physical body and our condition of it affects our interest in sex? How does it affect our desire? How does it affect our body's responsiveness or lack of responsiveness or what we want as far as foreplay or interaction or engagement, what we're afraid of, what we're confident about? Because remember, like the biggest turn on organ is not anything in the body. It's our brain, right? So our brain can bring us up or shut us down very, very quickly. Emily Nagasaki talks about you've got an accelerator and you've got a brake pedal. Right. So some people's accelerators are very sensitive and they can get turned on very, very easily. Right. Or some people's accelerators are very sluggish and it takes a lot for that accelerator to get moving. And the same thing with the brakes. Some people's brakes are very sensitive and one thing goes wrong and it's just like just come to a screeching halt. Right. And other people are very like you have to slam those things in order to slow things down. And both of those together actually influence our drive, our desire, our passion, and our intimacy. So it's not just like I'm turned on, I'm turned off. It's like, where, is my, where are my accelerators? Where are my brakes? Knowing both of those things are really going to be supportive as you're trying to navigate um, these things. Okay. So many, there are many factors that are going to influence our hormonal system. As we age, our, hormon our hormonal fluctuations are very different during adolescence, pregnancy, post-pregnancy, menopause, nursing, right? Males actually have a male version of menopause, right? What's happening with their prostate. These cyclical changes can be observed and start paying attention to how do your cycles of desire rise and fall throughout the month or months, right? For so for women, it can be on that monthly cycle along with your menstruation, for men, it can be on a monthly cycle as well because there's actually moon cycles that happen with men, right? But sometimes it's more of a seasonal cycle, right? So some people it's more like spring, fall, summer, winter. Just notice what your cycles look like. Physical conditions uh, like diabetes, cancer, medications, uh, heart disease, depression, some, uh, some of these things can really do yeah, excuse me, we're going can reduce your libido. Birth control medications, antidepressants, all of those can affect the libido and they affect people differently over different periods of time as well. And then stress is the other big thing that can affect us and our libido that adds to the mix. Because as our body changes and our consciousness starts becoming aware of these changes, it also can change how we interact, not only with our own bodies, but with our partners, okay? So this is a really great thing to start doing some emotional freedom techniques and some tapping on. As soon as you start noticing changes that concern you, bother you, worry you, bring up fear, tap on that. And not just like, oh, even though I'm noticing that, you know, um, my vagina is more dry than normal and I feel worried, right? But what about it? Like, what are you worried about? Right? So we want a specific situation. I'm worried that it'll be painful next time I have sex with my partner. I'm worried that um, he'll think I'm not turned on. Right. So what is the actual specific thing that is bringing up the emotion? And we're going to talk about this later in, in other classes too, but how do you communication, how do you use self-touch or pleasuring or education to each other in order to also enhance this idea without also putting pressure on yourself or on your partner, right? We can't control all the situations. We can't control circumstances that happen during our day. We can't possibly consciously maintain all of our hormones in some kind of state of balance or even our mental state in a state of balance. But we do have the ability to control how much stress is going to affect us on a day-to-day -day level, right? And so by using all of the tools that you have, your own body awareness, your own clearing, your own ability to connect with yourself and your partner and communicate, that's just going to give you a better opportunity to start shifting these scenarios. Because the more often we get into a rut of the same fight, the same argument, the same fear, whether it's with the same partner or another partner, right? 
the more that neurological pathway becomes trained and emotional freedom techniques can help you retrain that pathway so you can make different choices, even if it's a different choice with a different partner. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you've learned in the comments below. There's also a link to the online version of Path to Passion class. Remember that you are love, you are loving, and you are lovable. Remember to subscribe and like so you get the rest of the class bits, and I will see you very soon.